minutes. Uh, okay, uh, so uh, what is the uh, goal of parational presentation? So the first goal is to find a special member in each parational equivalence class. Uh, so uh, this uh, special member uh, should be uh, something that is uh, easier to understand. And we have sort of one uh, main player in this game of trying to find a special member, and that is the canonical sheet. And so uh, parational classification is used in this canonical sheet all the time. And so I wanted to uh, uh, give uh, some different definition of it. So if you are uh, on a smooth variety, then this canonical sheaf is uh, uh, just the topic steer power of the cotonic sheaf. And more generally, if you are on a normal projective variety, you can make this division and uh, this definition on the smooth locus, take the corresponding divisor, and then take its closure to have a definition uh, in this setting. And then uh, more algebraically, you can think about this. Uh, uh, canonical sheaf as the dual as the dualizing sheaf in Gothenburg starter theory in this setting, normal projection. Uh, so uh, how uh, does this go? So let's start with curves. So there is a very important invariant of smooth projective curves, which is the genus, and it's defined by terms of this canonical sheaf as the dimension of the space of global sections. So uh, for a complex curve, as you know, it uh, describes the topology of the curve and. Uh, determines the number of holes of this Riemann surface. So uh, from the perspective of parational geometry, smooth projective curves are not really interesting because uh, uh, they are parational if and only if they are isomorphic. So parational classification really starts in dimension two uh, with the parational classification of surfaces, which was worked out by the Italians in the end of the 1800s. Uh, so uh, they uh, realized that even though you can have smooth surfaces that are parational but not isomorphic, these parational morphisms are very uh, easy to understand. So they were a very particular form. They're just a sequence of blow-ups of points. Uh, so a blow-up of a point, this is a, a picture that uh, illustrates this. So it replaces a point with a rational curve. And that rational curve has the property that its self-intersection is minus one. Now, uh, Castanova realized that if you have any minus one curve on a smooth surface, uh, as a rational curve itself in section minus one, then in fact you can contract this curve to a point. So, uh, did I not say? so um, the Italian school uh, realized that to do this rational classification of smooth surfaces, what they needed to do was to contract minus one curves. They realized this process to stop and they would find the smooth surface that do not have any curves of this kind. So that smooth surface is not going to be the blow up of another smooth surface, so it's sort of minimal. Now there is really two different families of end results that you get, and these are the two sort of categories that you should have in mind. So either you get a unique minimal surface, which is the unique member in this parational equivalence class with the property that the canonical sheet is met, or you get the, the projective plane P1 plus P1 or a Hisseber surface. And in the second case, you should think about the surfaces as surfaces that are emitting a vibration to a lower dimensional uh, variety, such that this vibration is, uh, has this canonical sheaf, this main player, being anti-ample. So here is the positivity for the canonical sheaf, here is the negativity. So uh, this minimum model program is the name of the ambition of uh, generalizing this parational classification of surfaces into higher dimensions. So the goal of the minimal model program so, is to uh, try to contract the uh, curves in a way so that you either get a, what is called a minimal model, characterized by this canonical sheaf being left, or you get a more refiber space, characterized by having this vibration, uh, which is uh, anti-ample with respect to this canonical sheaf. So if you want to do this from dimension three, there is this main issue that will come up whenever you start to, to try to do this. And this is, even if you can contract curves that you like to contract, you're going to get singularities from dimension three. So there is the singularities that naturally appeared in this uh, uh, program, and this was one of the main uh, uh, obstacles in this uh, conjecture. So um, this uh, minimal model uh, program conjecture, uh, meaning the, the existence of such a program in all dimensions, it is uh, widely open still. Uh, however, it was established for three faults in the 80s and 90s over the complex numbers. And today, we also know special cases of this conjecture over the complex numbers in any dimension. And our fields of positive characteristic, it has also been established in dimension three, but this is much more recent. And the thing I want to draw your attention to is that the methods that you use in proving this program in dimension three 
it's going to be completely different if you are over the complex numbers or if you are over algebraic closed field or positive characteristic. And so the main reason for this is this vanishing theorems that we have over the uh, complex numbers. So most notably this kavamata fievig vanishing theorem, which is used in basically every proof of the existence of this program of over the complex numbers. So this vanishing theorem is just not true in positive characteristic. So it fails even for smooth surfaces in every positive characteristic. So this tool just doesn't exist. So there's completely different techniques that goes into proving this program in dimension three uh, over fields of positive characteristic. So now I wanted to talk a little bit about this vanishing theorem. So uh, even though this Kavamata theory vanishing theorem in general fails, uh, it has been conjectured that it might hold for one class that is very important for the minimal model program, and that is the class of Fano uh, varieties. So a variety of Fano, if this canonical sheaf, is anti-ample. And so uh, the following conjecture is sort of folklore, uh, that there should exist some, uh, uh, for every dimension n greater than equal to two, there should exist some integer depending on that dimension, such that n-dimensional final varieties over an algebraic closed field of characteristic greater than that P0, depending on the dimension, uh, have the property that this vanishing theorem, which in general phase, holds true. So this so conjecture- What's the word log there? Uh, so I, this will come to the next slide. <laughs> yeah. So these are the, the singularities that appear in the minimal model program. We will uh, discuss them, but uh, yeah. Uh, so, um, for uh, n is equal to two, this conjecture uh, was proven uh, by uh, Kashini, Tanaka, and Vitasek. Uh, and they showed that there exists such an integer, but they did not give any explicit such integer, okay? Just large enough characteristic. And uh, I want to draw your attention to that this conjecture is completely open for n greater equal to three. So uh, for my thesis, I was interested in this uh, question of finding an explicit uh, T zero in dimension two. Uh, and uh, together with uh, Fabio Bernasconi and Justin Assini, we managed to do this. And so we showed that this uh, vanishing theorem, Kavamata Fibi vanishing theorem, is true on log terminal final surfaces over algebraic closed fields of characteristic greater than five. So uh, we also showed that this five is in fact optimal because we constructed a final uh, a surface for which this phase in characteristic five, and together with the counterexamples in characteristic two and three. Uh, this gives that this is optimal. So now let's see uh, what is this log terminal singularities. Uh, so the class of singularities that, uh, so I told you from dimension three, you will get singularities when you do this program. And so this class is called log terminal singularities. And so these singularities has very good cohomological properties of very complex numbers. So first of all, this is the class where these vanishing theorems work. So this Kavamata, Fiveg, and all of this, they don't only work in the smooth setting, but with this kind of Singularities that appear in this program. So it's super important for establishing this program over the complex numbers. And they have this property that they are common macaulay. Now, the thing is that both of these things will fail in general positive characteristic. But what I want to tell you today is that having this Kavamata Fibi vanishing theorem for just these final surfaces, in fact, implies that the log terminal threefold singularities are common macaulay and characteristic P greater than five. So I wanted to explain why this is the case for you uh, by the following example. So uh, let's consider a cone singularity. So you start uh, with a surface and uh, uh, then you take a, um, a ample divisor on the surface and then you look at the F1 cone uh, associated to this ample device on that surface. So if you like, you can think about this surface being embedded into some projective space by this uh, ample divisor, and then you think of the affine cone over it. And so you have this cone point here, which uh, uh, might not be a log terminal singularity. And uh, it is a fact or um, when non fact is a computation that in fact, this cone singularity is gonna be log terminal if and only if this underlying surface is a final. Moreover, uh, being co macaulay this is a local cohomology equation. And if you calculate this local cohomology, you see that this uh, is going to be a co macaulay point if and only if a certain cohomological vanishing is going to hold on this underlying surface. So uh, at least uh, when you look at this uh, three-dimensional cone singularity, uh, you see that 
this cold singularity being called Macaulay is equivalent to uh, the first cohomology of all integer multiples of this divisor L vanishing. And uh, this uh, vanishing theorem uh, that uh, we know to be true for Farnow's increased gain of time directly implies that all of these cohomology groups will vanish when X is Farnow. So uh, therefore, if uh, Kersey is going to die, then this cone point is going to be called Macaulay. And it turns out uh, that this is not going to be the case in case 2, 3, and 5. So let's look at this. So to construct counterexamples as a start, uh, to construct log terminal uh, free-fold singularities that are not called Macaulay, uh, we start with a final surface such that this vanishing frame fails. So uh, we take some ample divisor with a non-vanishing H1. Then we look at the cone associated to this surface and this ample divisor, and then we have constructed a log terminal singularity because we are over a funnel, and one that is not called Macaulay because we uh, do not have this vanishing. So now this is just cones, but why is this interesting? So the interesting part of this is that, in fact, uh, uh, something holds like this uh, holds more generally. So Haken and Wittershek, they proved that if you start with any three-dimensional log terminal singularity, then you can do a construction called a PLT blow-up. That exceptional divisor will be a funnel surface. And to show that your original singularity is common Macaulay can be reduced from having a vanishing theorem on that, that exceptional surface. So combining this vanishing theorem for only for funnels together with uh, their arguments, we see that in fact, log terminal free-fold free singularities are called Macaulay over an algebraic closed field of characteristic screen in fact. Uh, and uh, they are not in characteristic two, eight and five. So I would like to end with the following uh, open question that I hope has been motivated now. Uh, and it is that if we are in dimension greater than three, does there exist an integer P zero depending on N such that n-dimensional log terminal singularities are called Macaulay over algebraic closed field of characteristic p greater than that integer n. So we saw that the, uh, for n is equal to two, uh, n is equal to three, this is uh, this holds, and the p zero three is five. And so uh, yeah, it's a sort of a very uh, interesting open question if there is uh, this kind of behavior in large enough characteristic in other dimensions. So thank you. What do they use about dimension three that allows them to do it? What do they exploit in dimension three? They? Uh, <laughs> Take on, maybe. Uh -huh. Okay. So uh, they proved that there is a P node, this vanishing theorem. You're asking higher dimensions. Yeah, yeah. It's two in dimension three. I'm asking how did they prove it? So uh, I proved the vanishing theorem for log the surfaces. Uh, in characteristic five, uh, over in characteristic larger than five. And then they uh, showed that there is this uh, uh, thing that we do in rational geometry. If we have a log terminal singularity, we can do a PLT blow up. And that PLT blow up has a unique exceptional divisor, which is a log the pencil. Now, in the dimension three, PLT singularities has a very good property. They are called my colleague in characteristic gradient five. So the question was to, to use, uh, to translate this good property of the PLT blow up to your original log terminal uh, freefall. And to do that, uh, you uh, uh, simply want to kill some higher direct images of this map. And to do that, you can uh, uh, look at this uh, standard exact sequence related to this exceptional curve. So you, you restrict to the surface, then you take the long exact sequence of cohomology. And uh, sorry, you do this. Ah, yeah, I should do this. <laughs> like, ah, but, uh, the, the, the end of, in short, you, you can say like this. So PLT, free for singularities has good singularities. You want to show log terminal has, you have this exceptional device, which is the panel. Vanishing theorem that panel will uh, allow you to do an argument to take this good property to uh, your log terminal. Yeah, sorry. Which kind of funnel give counter for small p? Yeah, uh, so these are, so actually how we show this, um, uh, vanishing theorem is that we actually show that these uh, final surfaces lift to character zero, uh, or they have a longer solution that lifts uh, to character zero. 
So uh, in Curtis 2, 3, and 5, you have examples of things that are completely Curtis P phenomena. So yeah. So, so these, 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 are, these examples are non-liftable things. Other questions? So in higher dimensions, what is the relationship between this and a vanishing theorem? For, for mm, that's a very, very good question. So one would <laughs> they want to say that, yeah, it's direct to look, because uh, uh, I think at least the measure four, I think the existence of PLT blowups is known. So you could do something similar, but then, you know, we really use this statement that this PLT singularities has this good property. And this, I think, is not known in high dimensions. So it's not, there is not a direct, actually, relation, even though <laughs> morally there is one, so to say. Yeah. Okay, let's thank Emily again.